Okay, um, I'm sharing my screen now, and hopefully that works uh, straight from the beginning. Yep, all good. <laughs> okay, fantastic. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dave. Uh, very interesting uh, speech, and thanks, um, uh, Darren, for having me here on this uh, presentation today. Um, very pleased uh, to be uh, part of that. Um, let me introduce myself. You did a very uh, int good introduction in the beginning. I'm uh, working with CGG for 23 years now, 22 years of which I'm um, working with traders very closely, um, being an application specialist at CGG um, to help traders uh, utilize the most out of our uh, software. CGG has so many things um, in different areas. Um, we are in the marketplace since 40 years. And CQG was known mainly as the charting product itself. So we had charts, but these days nearly everyone has charts. So that was not something special. So uh, the real key on CQG is to visualize things um, the way you want to see it, to manipulate the data, and also to trade via CQG on this data. And uh, this is my job, helping traders in various different markets uh, accomplish just that. Um, when um, we got in touch about that iron ore um, uh, speech today, um, I started looking at, uh, at the markets and, uh, and trying to analyze the data. And I just put a little bit of a, a timeline together what I would like um, uh, to show today. I want to give a little introduction into the data hub we have in China. CQG uh, does have an office in Shanghai. And I've been uh, there twice uh, last year for uh, training our internal personnel there. And I have to say we have very, very nice and very good people there, uh, really keen on, on helping uh, our customers in their time zone. Uh, we, we'll build the spread on the uh, CQG platform itself. We'll have a look. Uh, we'll look into some tools of analyzing the spread, and we will also try uh, to place some orders on the actual iron ore spreads. So I have two spreads in mind where we can have a play. First of all, the data. So the first start, if I try to figure out if something, what something doing, um, I just first step is look into the pure data. So CQG has about 40,000 symbols on its platform uh, covering uh, about 60 or uh, 60 uh, commodity exchanges around the world. And uh, with our expansion a couple of years ago into China, uh, we are very proud that we serve um, the Chinese markets onshore and offshore. And uh, we also have uh, that data available to our customers. Um, looking at the iron ore itself, I was trying to figure out if there's an opportunity for spreading um, coming into play with a like white piece of paper starting, okay, let's see what we have. So I was looking in um, the Dalian contract, the iron ore, uh, the symbol as mentioned is I. Uh, at the day I looked it up, it was trading roughly around 790 RMB and it's a hundred ton contract. So that if you, if you do the math, that uh, sums up in uh, 7,000, uh, so, sorry, um, uh, 97,000 RMB, which is around about 11,000 and, and change uh, US dollars. Uh, we can look at the SGX contract that's um, uh, traded in dollars and uh, the contract size is the same. It's about 100 tons and that makes it very, very easy to actually build the spread. Sometimes if you uh, do inter-commodity spreads between two different exchanges, uh, it can happen that the contract size is different, the tick size is different. So you have to do a little bit more complex math. In this case, it was not so complicated. So. Um, I just calculate the uh, dollar price uh, from one com commodity that's already quoted in, in dollars uh, minus uh, the second commodity, and I, I get some kind of uh, spread out of that. Uh, I show you that in action in a, in a few seconds. In our CQG spreader, as mentioned, we can create uh, these kind of formulas, uh, whether they are really, really complex or simple. In that case, let's just make that a little bit bigger. Um, we're just using the CQG spread formula and uh, using um, the SGX contract against uh, the Dalian contract. And I was, uh, I choose to use a, just a, a standard number for the conversion rate uh, to um, US dollars. You could use another future contract to accomplish that if you want, but I want to keep it as 
simple as possible. And I was just putting in a fixed rate. Of course, in a real uh, real time day to day trading, you would need to adjust that rate every now and then. Uh, once you have that formula into place, we can actually spread uh, the data directly on the chart in any possible time frame and put any studies and indicators around. Or we can look at the two, I would say, normalized contract if I move the contracts into US dollars also on the chart. And we have the opportunity um, of trading that. Maybe PowerPoint is not so important. So I would just um, switch directly here to my live CGG data. And um, I hope the, build, uh, the, the screen is uh, still on and you can see, um, um, see the different windows I have here on my CGG platform. So first of all, at the DC and the Dalian exchange, we do have um, uh, the various mentioned iron ore contracts. Uh, we do have the whole chain until uh, in this moment, till September uh, 21. And just looking at the volume contracts uh, over the last um, one hour when the market reopened, uh, just when we started our speech here today, uh, there's already in the Feb uh, 21 contract, there's already 141,000 lots traded. So this is, this is quite some decent activity. And especially if you come to any kind of technical trading, you need volume, you need something uh, that's actively traded to get your, uh, your functions and your, your technical approach in. We can also uh, look at the Singapore uh, prices on iron ore. Um, that's the contract normalized in US dollars. And uh, also here, uh, I, was, I was using the spread February against February uh, in the beginning, but at the moment it looks like the December contract is a little bit more heavy traded um, than the actual Feb contract, but uh, that doesn't make any difference for us on the spread. So we can still go Feb Feb uh, for the spreads. Uh, once you created the spreads in the formula builder, um, we can also just display them in a simple quote spreadsheet to see uh, what, what the different spreads are doing. So on top, so the first thing is here, uh, the iron ore contract itself. So you see, uh, if you click on that window, you can see that the trading ladder immediately jumps to that contract and you would be able to place orders on the outright uh, futures contract via CGG by just putting any market limit or stop orders in uh, just like on any other trading platform. I just use the um, formula to normalize that spread into US dollar that can be displayed, but that doesn't live on the trading scale here. So the um, trading letter doesn't jump to the dollar price. Uh, we can look at the um, Singapore contract, uh, which has a little bit of a wider spread. So a good way to display that is to remove the, um, the digits in between, just with one mouse click to see the letter of that. And um, then we want to look into two different ways of, um, of trading the spread. Um, the first approach uh, is, of course, trading the calendar spread itself. And when I looked on the first uh, data set here, again, back to DCE, uh, probably the most active one, the most liquid one on the calendar would be uh, the FAB uh, contract. Oh, sorry, uh, the, uh, the Jan against the February contract. That would be probably the most liquid ones where I would uh, give it a try. And... Um, then as a second try, what we want to try to do is the R between the two markets and see uh, how, how we can trade that. Before I put any orders in, I mentioned um, CQG is a tool to visualize your things. So um, I can look any kind of chart. It's a daily chart. Um, it uh, features pretty much what we have seen on uh, Dave's PowerPoint presentation. Um, but on the live chart, the beauty is on CQG, you can change it to any possible time frame. So if you want to see the same data that uh, January contract in a five minute chart, I just hit five and enter on my keyboard and I go into the uh, smallest intraday charts and see smallest movements of the market uh, in real time. I can do that in any uh, potential time frame. I can um, do the same with the contract I have uh, converted into US dollars. Once I have done the mass, it's still a normal chart. So this is the actual Chinese iron ore contract uh, converted into US dollars and same functionality applies. I can make that a five minute chart. I can make that a 240 minute chart. 
uh, or even uh, a one minute chart if I want to. So to see very um, micro market movements um, uh, during the day. Same principle supply if I can chart and display and analyze from the technical standpoint, uh, of course, also the Singapore contracts and I can put them both together onto one chart. And this is immediately where you can see, oh, okay. Uh, they move very closely, though there must be a chance, an opportunity to, um, uh, to trade them. Let's start with the uh, calendar spread first on the, uh, on the Dalian. Um, as we can see, um, the calendar spread, I put it in my formula here called I spread simply. It's taking uh, these two contracts as simple uh, as that. And it's already giving me a preview value of about 19 uh, RMB. And I can see that spread uh, living here in the letter. So if I try to buy this uh, calendar spread uh, down here with 19.5 on the CQG platform, I'm trying to buy five lots. I just take the price and move it to the left-hand side to place a limit order for 19, I just hit 19, or I can do 19.5 by just moving that limit, or I could simply join the bid by hitting one of the buttons. So what the spreader actually does in the background, what you can't see, um, um, you click on legs here, and you can see what the spreader is trying to do. So it's taking uh, the two outright contracts and by default, CQG defaults are usually pretty good, uh, pretty useful, uh, but you can change them, of course. By default, what it's trying to do, it's uh, placing a trade on the least liquid contract. So uh, what it seems to be the, um, the FAB contract at the moment, uh, based upon what would be possible to buy on the January contract. So it's constantly looking um, in, the, in the background, it's constantly looking, okay, if I need to buy this here, uh, the quickest way is, would be accepting the ask, so I can buy it for, uh, for 786. Uh, if that is the case, I want to buy it for 19.5. Uh, I need to uh, place an order here on 66. So with every price change in the liquid contract, our spreader software adjusts the price on the, on the second leg, uh, trying to get uh, the 19.5 I, uh, I was trying to trade at. Uh, we can leave that running for a while and and see if we are uh, we're able to make it. You can see that the prices are jumping here in between. Um, there's various um, settings you can preset, um, and uh, it's all visible here. If you click uh, if you click on the um, actual contracts, as I said, it's a CQG defaults. It's using the least liquid lag uh, to put a trade on, assuming. If you get a fill on the least liquid, it's easier to get filled on the on the more liquid leg. Uh, but we do have a whole set of parameters uh, you can set up with CGG um, in, in various uh, different respects. You can uh, trade ratios if you want. If you have contracts, as I mentioned before, they are not the same contract size. You can trade them two by one or five by one, things like that. Um, you can use different uh, algorithms in the background, how it uh, would work. Um, you can set how it should complete um, the other leg. So in this case, um, we're using a limit order. Um, you can set uh, different price level controls. Uh, you can try to reduce the messaging on the exchange that you don't uh, put too many uh, messengers out of the exchange. You can place uh, queue holders uh, into, um, into the um, spreader as well. And you can predefine what the system should do if you get an incomplete order. So if you get filled on one leg and then just in that second, the other leg is running away from you. Uh, so you could do presets in your configuration what you, uh, you want to do in that case. Uh, that's all pre-trade. That means um, if I change anything here, um, that doesn't have any effect anymore of the, of the order that's already in here uh, because that order uh, was already placed. So if I change anything of the settings, I would need to pull that order and, uh, and place the other order. Now we are pretty close on the market. Um, so we, if we're lucky, we might get a fill here in the next, uh, next moments. Um, let's have a look into the, 
uh, in now somebody's trying to chat with me. <laughs> uh, let's have a look in uh, into the ARP spread. So that's a little bit more complicated uh, as pointed out. Oh, we got a fill. Let's go back. That's live. That's live data. Okay. <laughs> Before I go into the ARP spread, uh, I just want to have a quick look. So what happened? I tried to buy um, at 19.5 an artificial spread and I actually got filled at 65 uh, short on the uh, Feb on, on um, 84.5 uh, long on the, um, on the January like. So I got actually the spread I wanted to the price I wanted and spread I did that in the background uh, getting, uh, getting that price to me. So next step, um, and just place another order trying to sell five 10 ticks higher and that immediately worked. So the market is obviously pretty liquid at the moment. So I could immediately place, uh, place a five lot order and, and took, the, um, uh, took the spread into my pocket. <laughs> Works very well. The, um, back to the <laughs> iron ore ARP between uh, Singapore and, uh, and China. Um, as I said, this uh, function is a little bit more complicated. The contract size is the same. So the only thing we need to adjust is um, uh, the pricing between the two contracts. So I converted the Chinese contract into US dollar and I'm spreading um, that against uh, the US dollar traded um, Singapore contract. Again, a little click on the legs here uh, gives me an insight what is actually happening if I, if I place an order what the spreader does in the background. And the quickest solution would be here uh, as the spread here on the um, Singapore is a little bit wider. So the easiest way uh, placing an order would uh, be to join the bid here. Again, I click on the bid and I place a five lot order. And uh, normally what it does, it tries to determine which one is the uh, more liquid lag and which one is the least liquid lag. And then it's placing the order in the background. Uh, on the spreader. So the, uh, we can't see the order now because there's a limitation. If the, um, if the spread is too far off, it doesn't place the order. It waits till it's near enough at the current market. Um, it doesn't make sense to uh, place orders and to, uh, to post tickets all the time if the price is far away from the market. Again, that's something um, that can be configured as well. When did... Um, presentation started um, today, I already placed a few orders uh, and everything you do, everything you trade uh, goes automatically here under trade into the orders and positions window. And uh, we can see the uh, account I'm using, it's a spreader account, it's uh, only a demo account. And I can see the uh, different orders I have on and under purchases and sales, I can, uh, I can see the different in, in out trades I have done per commodity. Or let's do it all. Um, here's, um, here's the trades I did in RMB and in US dollar and uh, the combined BNL. The um, strategy manager uh, also uh, tears it down to the actual spread trade. I was doing today, so I was um, I was earlier buying five um, five uh, five lots on the spread um, and playing around a little bit before uh, we started the session. So everything you do uh, goes into real time uh, from from the exchange directly into your account, and you can you can monitor the position. At the moment, we're not so lucky; we don't get a fill on the um, on the ARP spread, unfortunately. Um, that's probably due to the um, market situation at the moment. So we can try to move the spread a little bit closer. So if we look at the very close chart of the ARP, so the last trade has, has been around eight minus 817. This is where our current bid is. So um, we could try to move it up a little bit and see if we, if we can get a fill a little bit higher, joining maybe the eight or nine making that chart a little bit smaller. And now as we're closer to the, um, if I'm trying to buy it for minus uh, eight or nine, I can see that actually the other order kicked in. So at this, in this case, in this scenario, it's looking at the uh, Dalian exchange on the iron ore contract, looking for the volume available here, assuming that's the most liquid market. 
and it's placing the order here on that market. At the moment, at the current market situation, it's a little bit off. So we are, and you see that the volumes are uh, not so high here at the moment on the um, on that contract. So uh, it's probably not gonna uh, gonna get filled within the next uh, few minutes. But um, that's the way um, it works. You build the artificial spread. You can display the spread on on a ladder. And you place an order as it would be just a normal outright contract order and the spreader engine in the background, the CQG servers, um, they do the calculations and they do place the orders for you on uh, two different legs. That could be as shown in the first example, um, that could be um, in, in one exchange, like just a classic calendar spread or something, or that could even be cross exchanges and cross markets. Um, just quickly, Helmer, on that cross exchange spread DCE to SGX, obviously DCE is in CNY and SGX is in dollars. How do we implement the FX part of that trade into CQG? Well, in this case, I was uh, just uh, using um, the currency uh, exchange rate and I was using a fixed number to keep it as simple as possible for the, for the spread. So I put in uh, 6 7, um, uh, just before we started um, into my spread formula. It's uh, the conversion of uh, the iron ore into US dollar as a fixed number, or in the ARP, it's the same here. I'm using, that is the symbol for the um, Singapore uh, contract, and I'm using the iron ore contract uh, also with, uh, with the ratio I put in manually. Technically, if you want, you could um, uh, use um, RMB future or something like that uh, and have a, like a three leg spread, but I wanted to keep it kind of simple and I'm not using like three legs and also uh, arbitraging on the, on the um, FX itself. So it's just a spread between the two markets. Got it, thank you. Okay. I think uh, that was very, very quickly. <laughs> uh, I tried to stay as much in the time planned as I could. Um, and uh, that's what I wanted to show, the charting capabilities of CGG, all the different markets and placing orders on the different types of spreads. Um, that's my part, open to Wonderful. any questions. Thank you very much, Helmut. And I have to congratulate you on getting those fills while doing your presentation. Um, I've done a few of these things over the past 20 years, and it's not often we see a, a good trade live as the presentation is being held. So congratulations. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about uh, last week to record, to find a better time when it's more actively trading to record something, but I'm a big fan of, of live doing the real sim, like this uh, real thing, like the, like the stand-up comedians. <laughs> indeed, indeed. All um, right. So, David, I've got a question for you. We're, okay. we're three weeks away from the conclusion of this United States dog and pony show that is the election. Um, what are your predictions for what will happen if Trump gets a second term or Biden gets in? Well, if, uh, if Trump gets a second term, term, I, as, I, I, as I indicated, I think there will be significant um, violence, uh, more so than the uh, race riots we've had. Uh, there have been the significant leftist uh, qua uh, quasi-military type of uh, terrorist groups that have indicated that uh, uh, they are really going to, uh, they, they said they were going to be starting by killing million, uh, billionaires. Um, and so it's going to definitely be a backlash and it's going to cause a lot of uncertainty. But if Biden does get elected, that's another one of those things that contributes to inflation. Uh, because then uh, if Biden gets elected, more than likely, that could mean a complete sweep uh, by the Democrats. And if that is the case, then significant uh, deficit spending uh, will be seen. Uh, there will probably be a contraction in terms of some of the investment. And so things will tighten up uh, uh, financially, and that's going to result in money needing to look for a, a home in, in, uh, uh, in commodities. 
And at, at the same time, it could actually get Washington away from gridlock because we've had uh, the opposing political uh, ire that's taken place. Uh, now, when you have one party, then they can pretty well do what they want. And so uh, the, the path to the least amount of anxiety is for Biden to get elected. Uh, the more volatile scenario is that uh, Trump surprises at the end. And if Trump surprises at the end, Darren, uh, that means it's going to be extremely difficult to determine uh, quickly who won. Um, and as we had in a previous election uh, with uh, the, the second uh, Bush uh, involved, we had a court uh, battle that ensued. And so that, that's, gonna, that's why I think that there's tremendous uh, water that we have to traverse before we get to smoother water. Uh, it's going to be ugly either way. And commodities, uh, equities don't like uncertainty, and commodities won't either. And who do you believe China would prefer to be president if they? Oh, I absolutely Biden. Biden. Well, I mean, Trump is uh, proven to be. Um, I mean, he is aggressive. Uh, he is, uh, instead of taking a compromise deal, he holds out for, you know, the whole deal um, and, and is less compromising. Um, and so, I, yeah, I think, uh, uh, and, and uh, Russia would like to see Biden also because they see that uh, they could probably uh, control him better. And in, in terms of speculation, you mentioned before there were some products that um, were not heavily speculatively traded. However, do you think with the advent or the embracing of um, electric cars that, you know, obviously nickel is going to be used to make a lot of the batteries and a lot more copper is going to be used for all the wiring. So, you know, I've heard that it's four or five times more the amount of copper that you need for a, an electrical car than you would for a you know, gasoline one. Do you think this will attract more speculators into those otherwise mostly hedged markets it, it, absolutely but it takes a it takes a sea change or a mentality change because if you if you took a survey of 100 people uh you you would get very few people that would uh, say we're going into an inflationary scenario now uh palladium is used extensively by china in the uh, catalytic converters uh, platinum is used extensively in catalytic converters of diesel uh, vehicles, but yet the palladium market has not seen a significant inflow of investment. But uh, we look in gold and silver, and we've seen uh, we've seen about a 35 to 40 percent increase in ETF investments, and so it takes a while uh, to get that money to even realize that there's this other vehicle. Uh, but once it gets into that mode, it easily overwhelms what's there to begin with. So even though you have a, in the lumber market a significant amount of uh, maybe a 90 percent of the trade is commercial, maybe 95 percent, if you were to begin to throw in some investment money into then all of a sudden it changes the paradigm. Yeah, I mean, certainly, as I mentioned before, China is definitely in the stages of opening up more to international trade. Um, only this month they announced the combination of their two, you know, foreign investment programs. So um, it's very timely that we had this this webinar now. Um, and I'd like to thank you, Dave, uh, once again for participating. Also, Helmut, um, thank you very much for joining us today. And lastly, I'd also like to thank our gracious sponsors, the Dalian Commodity Exchange, for allowing us to hold this today. So thanks to all those that attended. Um, this webinar will be recorded and posted on our website after editing. Um, so please enjoy the rest of your week and please stay COVID free. Thank you very much.